In this video, I'm gonna share with you the top 15 must-know shortcut keys that will turn you into a time-saving champ inside of Cinema 4D, and all in under 15 minutes. Even if you've been using Cinema 4D for years, it's really hard to keep track of all of the shortcut keys that can really improve your workflow. And here, I'm gonna share with you my top shortcut keys that I use every day, and hopefully you'll find them just as useful. Be sure to download the handy PDF reference guide that has all 15 of these shortcut keys so you can reference them in the future. Link is in the description. Let's start out by covering some handy shortcut keys that will help you while working in the object manager. Yes, the manager of all objects, which brings us to shortcut key number one, which is scroll to first active. And I use this probably every day. What this allows you to do is select an object in your viewport. And if you want to reveal it in your object manager, you just need to make sure your cursor is hovering over the object manager here and hit S and this will reveal that selected object. Even if it's in a hierarchy, it's going to automatically unfold it and reveal it for you. And you can then select that object or any children objects and adjust any parameters or do whatever you want to those objects. So this is a lot better than selecting an object and manually unfolding, trying to dig through and find out where that object is, hit S, it'll do it all for you. Scroll to first active, definitely great for lazy people like me. Now this next set of shortcut keys are handy for when you ever need to add an object as a parent of an object or a child of an object. Instead of doing this manually, what we can do is select an object, and if you want to say add a subdivision surface as a parent of that selected object, what we're gonna do is hold Alt or Option down and release my mouse, and that will automatically add that object as a parent of that object that I had selected. Now to do the opposite and make an object say a child of a selected object like this Bendiformer, I'm gonna hold the Shift key down, and then that will then make that object a child of that selected object. So Alt or Option will make it a parent of a selected object, and Shift will add the object you're creating as a child of that selected object. I'm just gonna go ahead and go to Delete Without Children, and that will delete those parent objects and leave that child. This next shortcut key is great for if you ever want to, say, add an object to your scene and have it snap to the same position and orientation as another object. So let's just say I want this cube to inherit the position and orientation of this sphere over here. What you would typically do is make that object a child, go down to Reset Transform, and that's one way to be able to have an object inherit the position and orientation of another object. But there's an easier way to do that, and that is by selecting the object that you want to inherit the position and orientation of, go to the object you want to create, like this cube, and hold the Commander Control key down, and that's gonna create that object, and it's gonna snap to that axis center in the orientation of that selected object. So now I can, say, scale this down, move this up, and now I automatically have that object kind of in the same area and orientated the same way as this sphere here. So the next option here is a way to be able to select all children of a parent object. So you'll see when you select a parent object, it's not going to automatically select all the children, but if you middle mouse click the parent object, it will then select all of the children objects underneath. So I can do this with the background wall elements and it's gonna select literally every child in the hierarchy underneath that background wall elements null. Now this is great for if you say want to add a tag to all those selected objects. Another great way to say add the same tag of a parent object to children objects is to add the tag to the parent object, right click on the tag and go to copy tag to children and we got that same result. So middle mouse click to select all the children of a parent object. Now this next one's great if you ever need to toggle on and off a generator object. And that shortcut key is Q. And you'll see that when I have this object selected, it's actually selecting that extrude object. And I don't even need to be anywhere in the object manager. I just need to be in my viewport here. And I can hit Q and toggle on and off that extrude object. Now this is extremely handy for when you're doing box modeling with subdivision surfaces because you can easily toggle between your subdivision surface view and your unsubdivided view 
and that makes your modeling process much, much more streamlined and faster. Do you like learning workflow tips just like these and you want to gain a deeper understanding of Cinema 4D? Then check out Cinema 4D Basecamp, part of our core curriculum over at School of Motion. And if you're already a pro at Cinema 4D, then check out Cinema 4D Ascent that will take your skills to the next level. You can find out more in the description. Now for the next set of shortcut keys, we're gonna focus on keys that will help us in our viewport. And the first one is probably one of the shortcut keys I use the most. And when I learned about it, it definitely did the uh, head explosion emoji for me. And that is command or control, right click. And what that allows you to do is wherever your cursor is hovering, it will give you a menu of all of the objects that are underneath your cursor. So I can select the wall object if I wanted to, or the ear pad, the ear pad backing, command and control, right click, the headband. I can literally select anything. So this is great if you have a lot of objects cluttering up your scene and you just wanna select one object, but it's hard to select in your scene. This is one way to be able to easily select objects in your scene. Now this next shortcut key will allow you to focus in on different aspects of your scene. And those shortcut keys are S, H, and O. S centers your view for any selected element, including points, edges, polygons, hit S, and you'll now see it's going to fill up my view with this selected polygon. H is going to frame all of the objects that are currently in your scene, and O is gonna fill up your view with any selected object in your scene. And this actually works in your timeline as well. So if I select two keyframes here and I want to center my view to those two selected keyframes, I can hit the S key and it's going to maximize the view to show those two keyframes there. Now H is going to frame up all the keyframes in your timeline. And while we're in the timeline, let's go ahead and how about some bonus shortcut keys here? All right. Well, if you hit T, it's going to bring up a shortcut key menu that will affect any keyframes. So if I hit tab, to go to my dope sheet mode and select these keyframes here. I can hit T and say, let's go to linear keyframes. So I'll hit six. If I don't like that, I can go and hit T again and go to I, and that will add an ease in. T again and go to O, that will ease out. And T and eight will create soft keyframes. So T is just an easy way to be able to quickly access all of the different types of keyframes that you can add to your timeline. I'm gonna hit tab to get to my dope sheet mode again. And the last shortcut key I'll give you for the timeline is Q, which will add a keyframe at your current frame on your selected object. So I have my squash and stretch object selected there. I can hit Q and add keyframes wherever my playhead is. And thus concludes the bonus shortcut keys that come free of charge. Now if I hit shift F3, I'll minimize my timeline. Now this next shortcut key is very handy for modeling purposes and that is the ability to hide and show your axis handles. And the shortcut key for that is Alt or Option D. You can see I'm toggling on or off my axis handles and sometimes these handles get in the way, especially when you're doing some modeling. And sometimes you might accidentally hit Alt or Option D and you might be wondering where the heck did my axis center go? And that's probably it. You probably accidentally hit Alt or Option D. And you can also toggle this on and off in the filter menu. And you can see that Alt or Option D command right there. Now this other one is also helpful for when you are modeling. And that is the ability to toggle between point, edge, or polygon modes. So once you have an object selected in your viewport, you can hit the Enter or Return key to toggle between the point, edge, and polygon mode. So I can select some polygons here. I can hit enter, now I'm in edge mode. Hit enter again, I'm in polygon mode. So very handy to be able to switch between those different modes. And the nice thing is, it even stores those different selections that you made with each of those modes. All right, so the next set of shortcut keys are going to be very helpful when working with cameras. So let me go ahead and select my camera here. If you ever wanted to easily navigate around your scene and change the focal length at the same time, if you hold down the two key and you right click, this will allow you to change your focal length, which is super cool. So I can navigate around my scene 
hold the two key down and right click and adjust my focal length without having to go into my camera settings. So it's very great to compose a scene with ease by holding down your two key and right clicking and dragging. Now even more important is if you made a mistake and you want to go back to a previous camera view, the shortcut key to undo a camera view is command and control shift Z. So I can hit command and control shift Z and undo all those view changes that I did and go back to where we were. Now, if we want to redo them, it's command and control shift Y. So command and control shift Z to undo your camera view, command and control shift Y to redo those camera views. Now for our next couple of shortcut keys, let's go to the attribute manager here and let's say go to our cylinder here. Now let's just say we made all these changes to the cylinder and we actually want to go back to the default values that this cylinder has. So to do that and reset our values to default values, all we need to do is right click on either of these arrows and that will reset these values to the default values that you would get if you just created a cylinder from scratch. If I make some changes and I want to reset that, just right click on your mouse. If I go and rotate this, and I want to get back to the original rotation. I don't need to zero out all these rotation values. I can just quickly right click and zero out those rotations. Now, when it comes to keyframing, if you ever wanted to completely remove animation tracks from your timeline, typically you need to right click and delete track, but you can actually do this with a shortcut key. And that shortcut key is command and control shift and click and that will remove those animation tracks. You can also hold the command and control key down shift and click and drag down and paint down to remove keyframes in multiple tracks. So very easy way to remove animation tracks using command and control shift and clicking. Now my next shortcut key is one of the most important shortcut keys you should probably know, especially if you're new to Cinema 4D or getting used to the new user interface. And that shortcut key is Shift C. And what this will allow you to do is call up any object, any tag, any plugin or function that you want and add it to your scene. So if I want to add a cube to my scene, I'll type in cube, hit enter. If I want to add in a subdivision surface, I can just Navigate down, hit enter. It's going to add it to my object manager. If I want to add a tag to that subdivision surface, like a compositing tag, just type in compositing, hit enter. So this is great to just be able to call up whatever you want. And also, if you don't know where to find a certain option, like say axis center, you can easily just search for it versus trying to dig through where is the axis center to, where was it moved to, just use shift C, and you can literally search for anything. So we're on to my 15th shortcut key, which is probably the most helpful of all the shortcut keys, and that is Command and Control F1. And this allows you to bring up the help menu of any selected object or parameter and learn more about it. So cast shadows, I'm gonna select that word, hit Command and Control F1, and that will bring up my help menu on what is this cast shadows. I can go and say select this extrude, command and control F1. It's gonna bring up the help menu for extrude. I can even hover my mouse over any of these icons. If you're trying to figure out what are these icons, what do they mean, what do they do? I can hover over this icon here, command and control F1, and you'll find out, oh, that's actually the axis and soft selection tool. So very handy to be able to bring up the help menu for literally anything in your interface and learn more about it. And that's it. My top 15 shortcut keys in under 15 minutes, just got under the gun. Were there any that you didn't know beforehand? Were there any shortcut keys that you thought should have been on this list that I didn't include? Let us know in the comments section below. And if you wanna keep up to date on all the latest things in Cinema 4D or 3D in general, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you wanna learn more about our online interactive curriculum, head on over to schoolofmotion.com and hit up our team if you have any questions. Hope to see you in another video real soon. Bye.